Good morning, everyone. Let me introduce myself. So my name is Sarah Robb, and I've been coming to Glenmar since the dawn of time, basically. Way back to when we were still at the smaller church that is now the First Korean Presbyterian Church. You probably know my dad, Brian Robb. Currently the fifth grade teacher and usually tries to talk to anyone and everyone who will let him. You can probably see him stalking the halls of Glenmar after Sunday school and before the 11 o'clock looking for his next victim. I'm currently a senior at Our Lady of Good Counsel High School out in Olney. Sort of a hike. I'm captain of the speech and debate team. I'm captain of the girls' tennis team. And I'm representative of my school senior class for student government. And some other things that'll probably put you to sleep. A lot of my friends claim that they never see me in school anymore. They only see a little blur running around the hallways trying to get from one place to another. To top all of this off, my senior year, I had to deal with college applications. A long and arduous process that I wouldn't wish on even my worst enemies. A nice mix of stress, anxiety, thinking that you're not good enough for your dream college, and of course, college sweatshirts. The most daunting part of the entire college process though, were all the questions. What do you want to major in? Tell me about yourself. What is one thing you need to tell us about yourself that we, you weren't able to in the last six essays? If you were a fruit, which one would you be and why? And basically, they were all asking me the same question. Who are you? And for the most part, I didn't know how to answer these questions. I'm 17, making some of the biggest decisions of my life, and you're asking me who I am? May I reiterate the fact that I'm 17 and my parents still do my laundry? <laughs> For all the nice things littering my resume, I'm nowhere knowing who I am than the next person. And some people may know who they are by the time they're six, and that's pretty cool. But for most people, they have this nagging question of who am I, following them through the rest of their lives. I bet even you still have that question pop up in your head day to day. But if I don't know me, and you don't know you, then how do we actually know each other? Honestly, I didn't know what to make of this passage when I received it for the sermon. When Sean said, hey Sarah, you'll be covering the transfiguration as your sermon. I was like, the what? <laughs> I bet that makes my parents very happy considering I've been going to a Christian private school for the last 12 years of my life. <laughs> Sorry, mom and dad. But thanks to this passage though, it became clear to me that not knowing who I am or who everyone else is is not a new concept. The apostles ultimately had the question of who is Jesus the entire time leading up to his passage, even if they sort of gathered the clues being dropped. As much as we question ourselves, we also tend to question God with these kinds of questions, and that's okay. Coming to know who Jesus is to us, each and individually, is part of a process that helps us to better understand ourselves. Just like how we question and doubt ourselves, we question Jesus and God too. So today, we explore who Jesus is to us, to understand why this matters so much. So in biblical times, the Jews prophesied the coming of the Messiah. He was supposed to be a king figure from the house of David, be able to reclaim or rebuild the temple and bring the eternal kingdom of God to earth. Jesus fulfilled exactly one of these things and not even in the most literal sense. He was only from the house of David but his dad was a carpenter, not a very kingly figure to inherit from. And despite all of this, he made the low-key, bold claim that he's the son of God and the Messiah, a heavy claim in the past that could have even been considered blasphemous. He claimed who he was without yet fulfilling what the Messiah was supposed to do. 
It's like me claiming that I'm going to Harvard without the admissions letter. <laughs> the apostles had no idea who Jesus truly was. If, ooh, gotta mix it up. And yet the apostles still chose to follow him. They laid down their fishnets and their responsibilities to follow him. This reveals one of the most important traits about Jesus. He is worth following. In a previous passage of Luke 9, 18 to 20, it says once when Jesus was praying in private and his disciples were with him, he asked them, who do the crowd say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others that one of the prophets of long ago has come back to life. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? And Peter answered, God's Messiah. But even before this passage that we're actually focusing on, when Jesus asked them, who does everyone think I am? And Peter sort of stumbles upon the answer as God's Messiah. And while this is the correct answer, he got it by accident. All the while, they're still following him, trying to fully understand what this ultimate title means when it was gotten by accident. In this passage, they finally get the answer in the appearances of Moses and Elijah, two of the most influential figures in the, Ju in the religion of Judaism since Moses represents the Jewish law and Elijah represents the Jewish tradition. Moses and Elijah acknowledged Jesus, talking about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. And right in this moment, the apostles with Jesus, Peter, John, and James, have the confirmation that they've been going back and forth on for a while, that Jesus is the Messiah to bring fulfillment to Jerusalem, and they recognize his position as the Messiah, as well as his responsibilities. He is the ultimate cornerstone of the Jewish law and tradition brought to humanity. If that confirmation wasn't enough, God himself appeared as a cloud and covered them, saying, this is my son whom I have chosen. The apostles were realizing that Jesus is God, and these teachings of his will always fall in line with God's goals and his teachings. The apostles kind of represent us with our relationships to God. They were so perfectly imperfect. Just like how the apostles follow Jesus with a lot of unanswered questions, we have a lot of unanswered questions as well, feeding into our doubt. But they followed him without knowing the actual end game of the whole situation, just like us. I mean, Peter, the ultimate apostle, denied Jesus not once, not twice, but three times. And Jesus told him he was going to do it. Thomas doubted Jesus' resurrection. He needed to feel the scars left by the stakes on his hands to know that it is actually him. And there are plenty of times where we doubt Jesus when something bad happens to us, when we lose someone too soon, when hardships are able to rock the foundation of our faith. Following Jesus' message and applying it to our lives is easy in theory, but hard in practice. And when the apostles were shown Elijah and Moses, again, two of the most influential figures of their entire religion, they wanted to honor them and urge them to stay. They offered to build them dwellings, a symbol of the presence of something holy at the time, and they wanted them to stay for as long as possible. Just like how Elijah and Moses, they wanted them to stay as a sort of confirmation of all of their beliefs, we hold on to proof and evidence as well. We take refuge in these kinds of things. But Elijah and Moses ultimately leave. And while Jesus definitely could have returned back to heaven with them and save himself a whole lot of pain and suffering, he chose to stay. We are terrified to exist without evidence and proof. 
But this defeats the purpose of the kind of faith we're meant to have. We have faith in who Jesus is because we believe who Jesus is. And Jesus is someone who stays. And so the weirdest part of this entire passage, which wasn't the two people, dead people showing up, God making his presence known as a cloud, or all of this happening on a mountain, was that the apostles didn't go and tell everyone the ultimate confirmation of their beliefs. They kept it to themselves. They were shown proof and confirmation of Jesus's ultimate identity, and they didn't go and tell everyone with a pair of ears. They kept it to themselves. They got their answers, and that's enough for them. They kept it to themselves as a sort of way for everyone else with the who is Jesus questions to be answered for them each and individually through different experiences. They are able to answer this question through this interesting experience, but also because of their relationships that they held with God. It's crazy to me to think that the apostles were friends with the ultimate figure of God sent to bring salvation to humanity, but allowed meaningful and personal relationships with each of them. Jesus is not a distanced Messiah figure, but one that we're able to forge meaningful relationships with. We know love because we know the love of God. And at the end of the day, he laid down his life to save us from our sins, the ultimate act of love. Jesus is ultimately worth following because he continues to stay. And for everyone, this may be found in different ways. For the apostles, even after every single one of them deserted him in the end, He returned to the land of the living, defeating death and saving us. To you, it could be in the form of knowing that after every bad thing happening to you, in the end, you are still able to acknowledge the beauty in the world. It could be in how you see your kids smile after a long day of work. It could be in how you are able to acknowledge your own happiness after a fight against mental illness. He stays in different ways for all of us. But in us acknowledging him and his status as the Messiah, it carries a responsibility to acknowledge our doubt and our weaknesses. It's knowing that you doubted him but here you are still standing in front of God with your faith and praying for him to give you strength. It's knowing that we're like the apostles, perfectly imperfect. We're sort of bad at keeping up conversations with God, not always praying as much as we should or going to church as much as possible, but knowing that because Jesus is Jesus, he's willing to stay for us and be there for us no matter what. But through all of this, by acknowledging our doubt and our weaknesses, we're also able to understand ourselves and who we are as well as our purposes. A lot of time people prioritize finding themselves over knowing God. But by doing this, you're not ever going to find God. You find yourself when you find your faith in him, following Jesus, trying to live like Jesus, these things help to define ourselves and our ultimate purpose. This school year was really rough for me. I was constantly tired and overworked and stressed and just not having a good time like how senior year was supposed to be. I didn't know where I wanted to go for college, I didn't know what I wanted to do career-wise, so I didn't know what I wanted to major in, and I didn't know why I felt like I had no friends when I was supposed to be surrounded by them at school. But this year, I also became close to to God and my faith, and I was able to really seek comfort in coming to church, knowing that even if I failed a couple of quizzes, that Jesus was still there and not going to leave 
And this served as a major stress relief. It was able to teach me about the nature of God and how he was a genuine friend in my life that I was able to confide in, as well as all the friends he was able to show me while being here at Glenmar. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for our faith. We thank you for faith being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Our faith is just that. We understand that the universe was formed at your command so that what is seen is not made out of what is visible. We thank you for this gift. We confess our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead and we will be saved. For it is with our heart that we believe and are justified. And it is with our mouths that we profess our faith and are saved. Amen.